So in this lesson, we're not going to do anything with hardware. You can see I just have a blank breadboard here, but we are going to start looking at the code to set up and use timers. So you can see in my code here, I have two new registers, TCCR1A and TCCR1B. I am also using the serial print command to use the serial monitor to look at the value of that timer since we don't have anything connected to hardware. So all I have done here is turned timer one on and then I am printing the value stored in the timer one register to the serial monitor. So when I hit start simulation, you'll see I have a number here that just starts at zero and is counting up. You'll remember from our previous video, you can think of this just like a stopwatch. So let's take some time to weed through the data sheet and look at the registers. We are going to use timer one as an example. Remember the Atmega 328P has three timers, timer zero, timer one, and timer two. So for example, we're going to see the register TCCR1A. This is for timer one, for timer zero, there's a register called TCCR0A that's very similar, but we're only going to look at timer one as an example. So as we've seen with other registers previously, we can go to the page for TCCR1A in the data sheet and we have a list of the bits in that register. And then we have a bunch of tables explaining what those bits do. So we're going to go through these one at a time and then come back to our code to use these in an example. So first we have four COM bits here. We're not going to use these yet. These are related to pulse width modulation and using timers to control physical signals on output pins of the Arduino. You can see in these tables, we start mentioning things like OC1A and OC1B. And if we switch over to our pinout diagram, we'll see some pins that have those labels on them, which also have this little tilde or squiggly symbol next to them. That means that these pins can do PWM. Again, we're not gonna worry about that yet in this video. So we're gonna ignore those four bits for now. Then we have two blank bits, and then we have these WGM bits, WGM11 and WGM10. Those stand for waveform generation mode. So we have a gigantic table with a bunch of WGM bits in it and a bunch of different modes of operation for the timer. And again, many of these are different types of pulse width modulation that we're not going to worry about yet. In this video, all we want to do is set the timer up to run normally, just start at zero and count up and act like a stopwatch. So to do that, we need to set the timer to normal mode. And for that mode, all of the WGM bits are just zero, as you can see in this table. Now you might say, hold on a second, that register only had two WGM bits in it. If we scroll back up here, we have WGM11 and WGM10. And in this table, there are four WGM bits. So we also have WGM13 and WGM12. And those bits are in a different register that we will get to in a second. You will notice there is some other information in this table. For example, each mode has a number associated with it. So normal mode is mode zero. It also gives you the top value. So when the timer is in this mode, this is the top value that the timer will count to before it wraps around. It's showing this number in hexadecimal instead of binary. So that's the equivalent of two to the 16th minus one. Remember this timer one is a 16 bit timer. So it is going to count to a maximum value of 65,535, which is two to the 16th minus one. Hexadecimal is just a much more compact way to write that. So if we keep going, we will encounter TCCR1B or timer counter one control register B, which has a bunch more bits in it. So First, we'll see those extra waveform generation mode bits that we were missing in TCCR1A. We are going to ignore these two bits, ICNC1, ICES1. We're not going to be using those. And at the end of the register here, we have three more bits we haven't seen yet, CS12, CS11, and CS10. Those are our clock select bits, which we will see if we continue to scroll down to this table, remember in our previous video, we talked about prescaling and how the timer has a default speed it will run at based on the Atmega 328P's internal clock, but you can also set a prescaler to slow it down. So oddly enough, it looks like this version of the PDF is missing a digit in this table. This should be a zero here. So if you don't set these bits, if you just leave all of them to zero, then the timer will not be running. But if you select a prescaler, then the timer will start running using that prescaler value. 
So as usual, there's a lot of information in this data sheet. It can be kind of hard to filter and get what you need. So let's switch over to a PowerPoint slide that condenses a lot of this information in one place. So let's summarize that and look at the registers to set up timer one. So we have TCC R1A and TCC R1B. In TCC R1A, we have all of these COM bits, which we are going to ignore for now. Those are related to pulse width modulation. So if you wanted to do something like control the brightness of an LED or the speed of a motor, you would use PWM for that. We'll do that in a future video. We have these two ICNC1 and ICES1 bits. Again, we are going to ignore those in these videos in this video series. We're not using them. Next, we have the waveform generation mode bits, which are confusing because they are split across two different registers. So in order, they actually start in TCCR1B and then go up to TCCR1A. There is a table in the data sheet that gives you all of the modes that you can select using those bits. So for example, for normal mode, you just leave all of them as zero, but if you wanted to select a certain PWM mode or clear timer on compare mode, which we'll talk about in the next video, you would need to set them to something else. And then finally, we have our clock select bits, which allow you to set the prescaler. And again, there is a table in the data sheet that gives you values you need to select for those bits. For example, if I wanted to set a prescaler of eight, I would need to set those bits to zero, one, zero. Again, all of this information is in the data sheet. It's just scattered over a few different pages and can be kind of hard to find. So let's switch back to our code and do an example. I'm going to say that I want to set my timer to normal mode and I want to set a prescaler of 1024. So this is the biggest possible prescaler that's going to slow the timer down as much as possible and that will allow us to kind of see what it's doing using the serial monitor. So going through, we can ignore all of these bits I have labeled in green. That means we can just leave them at their default value of zero. We have these blank bits that are not being used, so their default value is zero. So we need to figure out what to set our WGM and CS bits to. Again, if I go to this table and look at the waveform generation mode bits for normal mode, those are just all zeros. So that means these bits will be zero. My entire TCC R1A register is just going to be zero. These bits will be zero. And finally, I need to pick my prescaler bits. So I look at the table and to set my prescaler to 1024, I need those bits to be 101. So I'll have mostly zeros in my TCC R1B register and then 101. If I switch back over to my code, you'll see that's what I have here. I have the TCC R1A register written to all zeros. Now, technically you don't actually need to write this line because zero is the default value for every bit here. So if I commented out this line, it would actually be the same because I'm not changing any of these. I like to do that just for completeness and for my own sake. So I know that I am confirming that I have all of the values I want here. But technically, since it's all zeros, you wouldn't need to do that. And then in the TCC R1B register, I have set those clock select bits to what I want for the prescaler of 1024. Now, ignore the other code I have in here about the variable X. We'll talk about that in a minute. I am have the code to initialize the serial monitor connection and then print the value of the TCNT1 register, which is the register that stores the value of the timer. So I didn't mention this register when we were looking at the data sheet. You can write to this register if you want to overwrite the current value of the timer and for example, start it at a certain number but you can also just grab this register and it's going to store the current value of the timer. So we're just going to print this, print that in our while loop so we can watch the value of the timer count up. So I'm going to hit start simulation and it's going to go pretty fast, but you can see it started at zero and now it is rapidly counting up into the thousands of and tens of thousands and it should be approaching that maximum value of 65,535. When it gets there, we would expect it to wrap back around to zero. However, you are going to notice what is currently, as of April 2020, I would say either a bug or maybe just a lack of implementation of a feature in Tinkercad. Remember that this is an emulator. It's not actually running on a physical Arduino. It's running on in your web browser. And it is not properly modeling wraparound of timers. So rather than wrapping back around to zero as it should when this register overflows, it's kind of getting stuck and bouncing around around this 65,000 value. So again, this is a 
demonstration that we're using because it's convenient to do this in a web browser, but with some of the more advanced features, it's not identical to what would happen on the actual hardware. If you were doing this on an Arduino, you would expect this value to wrap around. And that is what I have this X variable in the code for us. So I have declared a global variable X here as an unsigned integer. So it should have that same maximum value of 65,535. So if instead of printing that, I'm going to increment X by 100 in each loop and print X instead, you will see that this does wrap around. So it starts at zero. It's going to count up through the thousands and then watch closely when it gets to just over 65,000, it's going to wrap back around to zero. So that is the proper behavior you would expect to see when a register is overflowing, but Tinkercad, so there we go, just wrapped back around to zero and got counting back up again. That is the behavior you would expect to see. We are not seeing that for timers in Tinkercad at this time. So your assignment for this lesson is pretty short. Duplicate this code, just the part for the timer. Don't worry about the variable X, but set it up so the prescaler is 256 instead of 1024.